Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today uh, back to working on the metal planer. <laughs> Got to get this thing finished up. Just uh, seems like every time I start working on it, something else comes in that I have to get done first and I just can't get it finished. But we're going to make some progress on it hopefully today. Now, I've, uh, where we left off on this is we got our, our brackets up on the top. This is where a counter shaft is going to come across and have some pulleys that go down to drive the machine. We're going to have a motor mount in between here with a motor that will then drive this, uh, this upper, upper pulley. Now, in the original setup that this machine would have had back in the late 1800s, it would have been before the time of electric motors. They would have used uh, some type of uh, stationary power source in the factory where this thing would have been set up at. That could have been a steam engine. In most cases, it probably was a steam engine, uh, but it could as well been uh, like a water wheel in a water powered shop or, or something along those lines. And there would have been a line shaft that ran down the entire length of the shop. Belts would have gone out to counter shafts and the counter shafts would have gone down to the machines and everything would have been powered from that single power source. In this case, uh, we are replicating that counter shaft by mounting it to the top of my machine and we're driving that with an electric motor rather than with a steam engine. Yeah, a steam engine would be a lot cooler, but I, I don't have one. Not here at my shop. At the museum we could do it, but not here. So anyway, that's where we're kind of at right now. And my challenge that I have is uh, putting some <coughs> bearings in here to hold this counter shaft and support it. And originally these would have been, there would have been some blocks in here that had Babbitt in them. And uh, I seriously considered going back that route, but at the end of the day, I'm going to try to keep things simple and uh, as maintenance free as possible. And we're going to put ball bearings in here. Uh, some people are probably going to scold me for that, but uh, that's the direction I've decided to go, at least for right now. And at first, I was going to take a block of steel, uh, bore a hole through it, put a bearing in there to, to support this. And I got to thinking about it. I said, you know what? What if I could just use a pillow block bearing? So a pillow block bearing, if you're not familiar with this is a modern style bearing. It has a couple of mounting holes on it. You have a bearing in here that is self-aligning. It can move around. It can rotate inside this housing so that, that shaft stays in alignment. And honestly, I really got thinking about it and I really feel like I need self-aligning bearings up here in the top. If I'm gonna go with ball bearings, originally this thing would have been with, with Babbitt bearings where it could kind of float around, uh, but we need to have some adjustment in there where it can adjust because these may not be sitting perfectly straight up and down or whatever. You may have some movement in the shaft. You don't want things to bind up. So I'm going to do modify this, this part here. And uh, basically what my plan is, is we're going to cut these ears off and see if I can get it to fit up inside of this slot. I'm probably going to have to mill or grind a couple of slots in the side of this for these little tabs to go into. And basically the way this works is, is you got two little tabs on the sides that hold it in, in place side to side and you have screws on the top and bottom where you can adjust the height of this up and down. So we're going to see if we can modify pillow block bearing to work in here. I really like these pillow block bearings uh, for this type of application. I think this type of bearing is going to be ideal. So that's the game plan. Let's uh, see what we can do to get these things modified. Just a quick close up here of the pill block bearing that we're looking at. And this is just an off the shelf, everyday pill block bearing. Um inch and a half inside diameter on this one, which is the size shaft that I need. And again, my game plan is, is I'm going to go to the band, so I'm going to cut these ears off so that we just have this block. And we're going to have to put some slots in the side of this to fit up into that piece. And we'll probably drill a little set screw hole on the top and bottom to hold it in place. Now, the way this bearing is, if you notice, it is fairly wide. It gives a lot of support in there uh, to put that in there and there's a a collar here that goes on the end and I don't know if you can see this or not but on the end of this is ground and an, an elliptic uh, a, a kind of a cam you got a matching offset cam here and what you do is you put this on your shaft and you put it up on there and you just basically jam that those those uh 
that cam, it twists this around and it will lock this uh, ring in place to the bearing. You tighten the set screw up on there and that way this piece is actually driving the bearing so that the shaft doesn't slip inside the bearing itself. Uh, anyway, they're kind of a nice little setup and that's what we're going to try to use. So let's see what we can do about making some modifications to that little casting there to hold that in place. So we're going to start over here on the bandsaw and I'm just again going to cut that little ear off. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and get this going. Using my uh, 26 inch do all bandsaw here, fairly new uh, addition to my shop that has really come in handy. And it's going to cut that cast iron with no problem at all. There we go. One side cut. Flip it around and we'll do the other. So I think we're ready to go ahead and mill these uh, slots in here where this thing can slide up on there. And to do that, I'm just going to set this over in the mill machine. And I'm going to set it up long ways here. I, I got just enough height in the back. I'd really like to have this back jaw just be a little bit higher, but it's going to work. I'm going to clamp it up against the front jaw, kind of flat here, and just set it down in there flat in the other direction as well and that's going to give me good work holding and we're just going to mill in and out and i've already come in here i basically just want to center this on here this is not a critical measurement i'm just eyeballing it i've measured these slots need to be three quarters of an inch wide so i have a three quarter inch uh, cutter in here and i've just i don't know if y'all can see it or not but i've scribed a couple of lines uh, on there to kind of eyeball to get where that needs to be and that's going to be plenty close enough right there uh, slot's going to go the entire length up and down. It needs to be about 300 thousandths deep. Uh, that's just kind of a rough measurement. Again, uh, this is, this is rough work here, guys. This is not anything precision. Um, uh, sitting here looking, it, it's not quite, needs to tilt this way just a little bit. Wasn't quite square and I'm going to have to adjust my cutter again, left and right to compensate for that. That's close right there. All right. What I'm going to do is just uh, raise my table up until I touch off. Right there. I'm going to come out. I'm going to zero my digital readout on the uh, Z axis, the up and down. And, you know, I've, I got a nice steady mount here, but I, I could easily take this in one pass. I'm going to do three 100 thousandths passes just to make sure I'm not putting too much stress on everything. So we'll uh, raise the table up 100 thou and make sure everything's gonna hold tight. My part is kind of moving around a little bit. I'm not not happy with this setup. Let me uh, pause here and uh, see if I can't. I may have to put a taller jaw here in the back to get a, a better, better grip. Let me uh, let me see what I can come up with. All right, a change in setup here. Uh, I ended up just swapping out to a larger vise. So I had my Kurt six inch vise in here. This is an eight inch vise. The jaws are taller. I thought I had a taller jaw that would fit in that six inch vise, but it turned out I didn't. But my goal here is, is I wanted to get the back of this jaw up past the center line of this radius in the back so that I was getting a good grip on here. I thought I was going to be all right previous, but it, it was a little bit shaky. I feel a lot better about this. We've got good solid contact. We're 
basically pushing it up against his face. I put a square in here to make sure we're square. And uh, we're going to go back to where we started from a while ago. I am going to, instead of doing 100 thousandths depth, I'm, I've cut it back to 50 thou. Just take a little bit lighter pass and um, have to take a few more passes, but uh, I feel better about getting where we're going to that way. So let's uh, do it again. I've already got it kind of centered back up on the part. So uh, again, 50 thousandths depth, half of what we were doing a minute ago. And we'll make a couple passes. So our goal is to go to 300 thousandths total depth. So this will be a hundred thou. We'll just cut back across. This will be the depth that we were at previously. And I'm going to do another 50, 300,000 total. One side done, we're going to flip it over and do the other side as well. So here we go on side two. Again, we will come up and uh, touch the cutter off to kind of get a zero. That's roughly zero right there. I'll zero my digital readout and we'll come up 50 thou. Feed our way across. We'll just work our way down again. So there we go, we got some uh, notches on each side. Yeah, it went in a little bit. That's actual bearing in there. There was a, a little cutout on both sides here. I think that's where they could get the bearing in and kind of turn it up. Uh, so we did get into that, but no big deal at all. We did not get into the bearing itself, so uh, we should be good to go. There is a little uh, spot there on that race. I think that's where that won't spin. It'll go in to that center part that's open but that won't allow it to, to to spin in there and this is designed for itself aligning so this race here is kind of uh, circular on the outside so that it can actually rock uh, in this holder to to get it to line up just right let's go try it out well, I had to make a little bit of a modification. This front tab here on this side, for some reason, was a good bit wider than all the other ones. All these other ones measured just under three quarters of an inch. This one was a little over seven eighths of an inch. So I just got my grinder out and hand ground it down to get it to the width. And we bring our bearing in here now. And voila, it fits right up in there. That's gonna work really good. Um, and what we need to do next is put us a little uh, spot on either side of this for this um, screw to engage into. There's kind of a rounded over tip on it and you can adjust the height of these to level it up and down by adjusting these screws and they just kind of float on those tabs and your shaft will run in between them. So uh, back to the milling machine, we'll uh, put us some holes on the top and bottom and We'll have this first one knocked out. I'll have to do the other side, uh, but I think this is gonna work out just fine. It's gonna be great. I've got these things marked where I want to put these little indentions in it. 
Got a spotting drill in there. And I'm just gonna put a, go down the diameter of that spotting drill. That'll give me a nice little indention there for that screw to kind of engage into. I'm gonna flip this over now. Come to me just a little bit. There we go. And there we go. We have our bearings mounted up here using the pill block bearings. Uh, I think it's going to work out just great. Uh, I really like this setup. It didn't require a whole lot of work to get them done. Just uh, milling some slots and making some modifications to a pill block bearing. And uh, it's gonna be perfect for the application because this is basically what you would use a pill block bearing for holding a shaft. Uh, I did come in here and we took these screws out. I cleaned them up, wire wheeled them, ran a tap down these. These were all rusty and stuff, got them freed up. Once I get them adjusted, we'll tighten these jam nuts up on the top and bottom, lock them in place, and uh, they will be set. Uh, should be anyway. So ne up next, uh, we need to get a shaft to go in here, a piece of inch and a half stock. Need a piece about five foot long. I don't have a piece in stock here at the shop right now, so I'll have to order that, get it in. Uh, I've got my pulleys pretty much ready to mount up on this thing. So uh, once those get here, we should be able to get the uh, counter shaft up and going fairly, fairly good. Uh, then after that, get a motor on here and yeah, we'll be, uh, I, I won't say we'll be finished with this job, but we'll be really down the road and we can really kind of start testing things out and uh, seeing how this machine looks like it's gonna work. So there you go, that is going to be a wrap. Uh, pillow block bearings mounted up on the machine, ready for a shaft now. Uh, we are making good progress. Uh, as always guys, uh, <clears throat> thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Those comments and uh, thumbs up are appreciated as always. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when we post new videos. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.